May the words of my mouth and the meditation on all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Episcopal priest and author Barbara Brown Taylor tells a story about a woman who left church one morning and as she made her way down the steps to the sidewalk, she bumped into a man who was standing on the sidewalk, kind of looking up at the church building. And he said, tell me, what is it that you people do in there? Well, the woman was caught off guard. She wasn't sure what to say. She stammered and she stuttered before realizing she didn't know what to say or how to put into words. And while she was trying to figure out her response, the man said, never mind, I'm sorry I bothered you. And he walked away. How would we have answered if someone wandered into the parking lot or saw us as we were putting away the chairs today? What are you people doing out there in the parking lot at nine o'clock on a summer morning? It's an invitation, isn't it? And we may feel awkward talking about our faith, but our answers matter a great deal. We see the headlines, the church is in decline. One caught my eye the other day. It said, Christian Christianity has a branding problem. You know, there's a lot of negative associations with Christianity today. And a lot of the nuns, you know, not the women in habits, but the N-O-N-E-S, the nuns, um, who identify as atheists or agnostics or those who say they have no religion in particular. And again, you know, we see the headlines and it makes us wonder how do we confess our faith in such an environment? Reclaim the good news of Christianity as we know it and experience it here. To get ready as the letter in first Peter says, to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have and to do so with gentleness and respect. Why do we resist? Maybe we're afraid we might sound stupid, or maybe we'll actually say something inspiring, something vulnerable and true about our experience of Jesus Christ transforming our lives and the lives we touch as a faith community here at St. Peter's in the woods. The important thing Barbara Brown Taylor concludes is that we try not only to say what we believe, but also to live what we believe. You know, last week we had some new folks visiting us and uh, one of our parishioners had invited the young man to come out on a walk in his neighborhood. Um, beautiful, right? And they came and they felt welcomed and seen and maybe they'll come again. So you never know when we'll have that opportunity to, to give that answer to anyone who asks us about the hope that is inside of us. And I think that question is on the heart of Jesus this morning when he says, who do people say that I am? Jesus is with the disciples in Caesarea Philippi, which is an interesting place for Jesus to ask them this question. At the time, it was a huge temple that was dedicated to Caesar and all sorts of competing gods and idols. Some of us visited when we were in Israel. And so in the midst of this environment, how would the disciples answer? Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And then of course, the more difficult question, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter, of course, steps forward. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus blesses Simon Peter and gives him a new name, Peter, the rock. And on this rock, Jesus will build his church a church that will stand even the forces of death. Who do you say that I am? What are the idols, the gods in our lives that challenge our ability to name Jesus and to know him and to witness to his transformational love in our lives? What about our culture, our assumptions or cultural assumptions about Christianity, our own insecurity, um, threatened to squelch how it is that we talk about the hope that is within us. 
Our answer today matters just as much as it did to Peter and the disciples in the first century. It's interesting that Jesus gives Simon Peter a new name, Peter, the rock, and to consider what it means for us, we who have taken the name Christian, literally little Christs, right? As we answer the question, who do you say that I am? The renaming of Peter has traces in the well-known stories of our ancestors in faith. We hear a bit of it in Isaiah this morning from the prophet Isaiah, Abraham, was Abram, becomes Abraham as a sign that he will become a father of multitudes. Um, just as Abram stood at the beginning of the people of God and was called a rock, so too Peter. Peter's name change reflects his function, his faith being used by God to bring a new people into being. Who do you say that I am? How are we listening to this question from Jesus today? Have we heard the question before, but maybe chosen to ignore it or to delay responding, waiting for just the right words for a moment to answer? A moment that makes us more comfortable, more suits our needs and timing, not so much meets the needs of a world that is so desperately hungry for our answer. Jesus is asking Peter as he asks us to give witness to who Jesus is. And we live our answer by imitating Jesus, by walking with compassion and mercy, with love, with justice and peace. And with Peter, we're called to live this witness in the midst of a, a weary world that pulls us in many different directions. I think Paul knew about that threat centuries ago when he warned the early church not to be conformed to the world. Our culture is all too ready to um, keep us bound to the world around us. Messages everywhere bombard us, right? Marketing, media, social media, trying to define us who we're supposed to be, what we're supposed to buy, what we're supposed to believe. And the world will tempt us to look away and the other things, things, important things like injustice, greed, hatred, or morality, the violence that surround us, tempt us to become numb to these things. And on this 60th anniversary on the March of Washington, we are reminded that the incredibly important work of Dr. King continues to be needed and is much needed today. Who do you say? that I am. As we return from our summer adventures and look forward to the start of a new program year, many are already back to school. It is a perfect time for us to reflect on who Jesus is in our lives and how we articulate and embody that understanding day after day. The world desperately needs our response. And this is the perfect place to come and see to practice articulating and to be part of living out that answer. Amen.